Hey y'all, uh, happy to be here. My name's Leon and uh, I have a confession to make. I am a coward. I only play Silent Hill 2 on New Game Plus so I can use the spray paint. I sleep away every single night in Minecraft. I barely leave my house to buy a can of soda pop, no matter how strong the craving. The fear of IRL conversation is just too much for me to bear. Anyway, if you relate to any of this, you might have thought to yourself sometime, Oh, Morrowind? I can't play that game. It's too hard. The graphics are too scary. The dice-based battle system is too intimidating. Well, don't you worry, bub. Morrowind can be really easy if you just do a couple of things in the first few days of gameplay to get yourself really set up for success. And yes, you will start enjoying the game, even as the yellow belly jellyfish you are. 1. Be yourself. We gotta start the game by making a character. What kind of character do you play in other games? Think about that. If you're a jack of all trades, master of none type, then be that. If you're a sneaky weasel, then slink around. This game celebrates all kinds of play styles and lets you do basically whatever you want to reach your goals. I'm obviously an acrobatic silver tongue Dunbar illusioner chemist with the power to alter my immediate surroundings with the color purple. And look, here I am. Truly, I am living my best life. So, you know, just be yourself. Should be simple enough. 2. Okay, now be an alchemist. In Morrowind, as in life, you have to level up. And if you want to level up quickly in Morrowind, as in life, you have to have piles and piles of gold. How you get gold is ultimately up to you. But just like Earth, there's really only two ways to get ungodly amounts of that shiny stuff. You can either A, steal it from others who worked hard for it, or B, sell pharmaceuticals. Yay, liquid. There's a free potion set in Caldera that you absolutely need, and I go over a lot of alchemy tips in my other videos, like this one. If you're on a TV, oops, check my channel page for the alchemy playlist, or consider subscribing and scrolling for it there. 3. Don't go dungeon diving until you're trained up. No, seriously, it's barely worth it. You're a coward. You definitely didn't make a character build like this. So stay out of the caves. Stay away from the main quest. You aren't ready. You can barely walk the paved roads on half the map right now. Also, hot little bonus tip here. Some of the loot is level scaled. So uh, yeah, nothing but net. Four, pick the right birth sign. Just like real life, the constellation you were born under matters. I'm not saying you have to believe in this stuff, but you know damn well there's someone out there who will hard ghost you as soon as they learn that you're a Capricorn. Morrowind's the same way. There's only a few good signs, but unlike real life, I will tell you the best signs in Morrowind to be born under. The best sign for cowards, in my opinion, is the Lady, which permanently fortifies your endurance and personality by 25 points. That's wild. Second best is the Lover, which permanently fortifies your agility by 25 points, and lets you kiss someone to death once a day. Great! 5. By training in your miscellaneous skills to buff out your attributes quickly. You'll probably never actually be training these skills through your gameplay, and they all probably started at like level 5. That means lots of cheap training for you. That's excellent! There's skill trainers everywhere, even where you'd least expect them. Every time you stack 10 new levels onto something, you'll get a plus 5 to its governing attribute. This is great. You can almost go in a cave now. 6. Learn the fast travel spells so you can run the f*** away. Buying scrolls? What? No. This is small brain behavior. No. Go to Belmora Temple, go downstairs, and talk to these two people down here. The three spells you're going to want to buy are um, CV Intervention, Mark, and Recall. Um, CV Intervention teleports you to the nearest temple, Mark sets a point on the map, and Recall lets you teleport to that spot you marked. The last teleport spell that you'll need is an Auld Run at the Buckmoth Legion Fort. Downstairs you'll find, uh, this guy, who will sell you Divine Intervention, which will teleport you to the nearest Imperial Legion. Cool. If the resting spell chance for these is under, like, 70%, I advise selling some potions and training up your mysticism skill so it doesn't fail in, like, a critical moment. 7. Establish a home base as soon as possible. You can get a house later, but you're not getting that house for, like, at least 40 hours or so, so you need to go to your favorite city or town and check out the housing market. And by housing market, I mean abandoned or locked houses. They just let you out of jail. No banks are gonna loan to you yet. 
Even if you are the chosen one, the system's rational, I know. Everyone deserves a place to live, to put their stuff. Carrying your entire life on your back at all times is demoralizing, chaotic, and, well, just really heavy. Here's a couple choices based on your personal aesthetic. For those who keep it spooky scary, Morvain Manor and Alderaan should be great for you. There's sounds of corpus beasts coming from the rest of the house, which you shouldn't necessarily bother with until you're a bit higher of a level. But there is a bed and plenty of space to dump your stuff. There's a key around here somewhere that should let you get to the lower levels. It's very dark, so I would invest in a couple candles or lanterns to spruce the place up a bit. Ah, there's the key. If you're into the dorm life, the Mage's Guild in Aldrun is quiet and spacious to get your studies done in. This is my personal favorite. There's plenty of boxes to put your stuff, easy mage transport to other important places, and plenty of services like an alchemist and enchanter right within your walls. Or perhaps you're more of a suburban dweller. If so, there's a bunch of easily unlocked doors in Balmora, and all of the houses come fully furnished and are rather pleasant. Centrally located, these are well-decorated domiciles with lots of rugs and tapestries and a very homey feel. However, if big city living is your thing, head over to Vivek's Temple District and then to the St. Delon Canal. There's a dead guy on the ground, ignore him. This place is just here waiting for you to move in. A couple of dressers, a comfy bed, and right in the middle of all the action. Not bad. Of course, there's plenty of places to call your own in Bardenfell. What's your favorite non-great house place to inhabit? And finally, eight. Save often. This is the most useful tip I can think of for cowards and noobs, or for anyone who's less familiar with games that don't autosave every, like, five minutes. Morrowind does autosave when you rest, but it's surprising how long you go without resting in this game. <laughs> so, save a lot. Save multiple paths for your character to go down. If you're ever feeling brave, save your game. Save scumming isn't that scummy. A little cowardly, maybe. But there's nothing wrong with privately being a big scaredy cat. Now go pick some flowers. Thanks for watching.